Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to episode 16 of my series Casual vs Speedrun in GTA 5. After finishing the big score, the player is loaded into Franklin on his motorcycle. The speedrun will make a save file and load it to again perform a save warp. This was first introduced and explained in episode 13, but a quick refresher. A save warp is a PC only trick performed by holding down a key for a different character than the one you were playing as while loading the game. So it will get confused and put you at that player's safe house. The speedrun will end up right at Franklin's front door, while the casual is having the drive all the way back to begin our final mission. This mission has three options in GTA 5, so you can choose a variety of endings. In the actual speedrun, we do option C, the third way, which is the longest, hardest, but also the most interesting mission. We'll go over option A and B first though. Oddly, when you drive straight back to Franklin's house here, another copy of his motorcycle will already be there waiting for you. The speedrun is going to enter first person and flip around to go hit the mission marker, then continue running back to the door where the cutscene begins. By doing this in first person and without delay, it skips the forced slowdown that the casual has to endure. We'll select option A to kill Trevor first, and the speedrun immediately hangs up the phone calls and knows they can run left to the car. We jump through this gap in the houses down onto the main roads instead of zigzagging through the Vinewood Hills. The trick to this jump is to go slower than expected. I use the power to line it up, then just let off the gas and coast through the bushes so they don't drag the car too far to the side, then continue down over the house. The speedrun will then be using Franklin's power to keep planted on the road and hit brake boost as much as possible for this drive. The traffic in this section is not super consistent, so staying in the center or right side of the road is the safest option, as well as looking far ahead during these downhill jumps as you lose your ability to react while well in the air, so you need the plan ahead. The casual is of course taking the suggested route to the next part of the mission, slow to select the ending and get out of Vinewood Hills. The speedrun is careful to stay leftish in this area, as it is common for parked cars to spawn in late in Mirror Park here. I'll show you a clip of that later in the video. Even though this isn't the intended mission for the speedrun, the upgrading of Franklin's car explained back in episode 14 still helps here, as 99% of this mission takes place in the vehicle. The main speedrun chooses option C not because it's fastest, but because it's the hardest and generally considered the true ending of the game by most players. And the category is called classic percent instead of the traditional any percent most speedruns use, as we have three other major rules that make the game more fun and more competitive to run. No use of taxis to skip drives, no failing missions three times to skip them, and no use of anything involving online mode to prevent future runs from being slower when Rockstar eventually shuts down the GTA 5 online servers. The speedrun cuts across the dirt straight to the mission as the casual drives around the building normally. Most of this mission happens in cutscenes, but we are of course skipping all of those in this playthrough. We'll talk how they would affect the time for the casual at the end of the video. Franklin confronts Trevor and now has to chase him. The speedrun will just go to the left of the road instead of tracing Trevor on the dirt as the casual does. The speedrun already knows the route that Trevor will be taking, so we can get in front of him so he is rubber banding by constantly going as fast as he can to try and catch up with the player. Annoyingly, Trevor's NPC driving that truck is rather slow, and the speedrun actually has to slow down at certain points to avoid going too fast and outdistancing Trevor. Most of the traffic that spawns in for Trevor and the player to avoid does not spawn in until Trevor is near it, so the speedrun has an empty road ahead of them until the next part of the mission. After the casual heads over to the oncoming side of the road, it'll show how much of a difference the lack of traffic makes for the runner. The speedrun also wants to minimize usage of Franklin's power in this section, as the slowdown from the special ability does not slow down the real-time clock we are running against, but does slow down the passage of time in-game. This part is clear enough to fast forward. The speedrun knows which exit to take and just stays ahead of Trevor, while the casual is dodging cars back and forth and having to follow Trevor's erratic driving, which does a good job of making you crash when he takes evasive moves. Coming up, the speedrun deviates again. The casual follows Trevor left onto the road then right down onto the dirt after another evasive action. The speedrun will just continue straight on the paved road to the buildings where the next cutscene is triggered, and just has to wait there for Trevor to also arrive. I'm sure the comments will be filled with people explaining which option they chose and why, but after playing option A and B, I know C is my favorite just because how boring killing Michael or Trevor can be. The speedrun's game loads, and they don't hesitate to shoot Trevor right away and the timer stops the moment you lose control of the character for the last time. Shooting the gas or Trevor directly doesn't matter. Get set on fire like this either way. The casual takes a few moments to pull the trigger but gets it done eventually. If you don't shoot for long enough, Michael is scripted to take the shot instead. 
So the speedrun takes just over 4 minutes, almost exactly half the time the casual does to complete this ending of Killing Trevor. Now we return to Franklin's house and will choose option B, to kill Michael. This mission begins up near Sandy Shores on the east coast of the map, so the speedrun will be spinning around and heading in a different direction this time. We'll be doing a similar jump down to the main roads again, this time jumping off the cliff onto some poor guy's house. It's the most direct way I could find in this direction. You could be risky and jump through the gap in the house right away, but it's very hard to set your speed consistently on dirt. We again use the power while in the air as it sucks the car onto the ground, helping us fall faster. The speedrun then hits the main road and hits some brake boost to get our speed up, and there is a shortcut through the bushes on the left, but there were vehicles blocking it, which happens from time to time. Coming down the hill here, the speedrun will then jump onto the highway. It is possible to be risky and try and jump straight into the correct lane of traffic, but jumping into oncoming traffic is actually safer here as the angle allows for easier avoidance of other vehicles. The casual is taking the suggested route, which will bring them twisting through the hills again, and then the long way around the back to the start of the mission. The speedrun hits some big brake boost on the highway that will carry speed all the way up north, and then cut across behind the wind farm directly to the mission start. Endings A and B are used in other categories of the speedrun. Ending A is used during any percent runs, where you can skip through the missions instantly by killing yourself three times. This ending of taking out Michael is used in 100% runs, as the routing works out where you can just deliver the final space part in this small trailer park right before starting the final mission. The speedrun cuts through the side as the casual takes the roads around to get to the mission checkpoint. Same as before, Franklin now confronts Michael and then has to chase him down before finishing him off. Michael will also rubber band ahead of the player no matter what, but there's no chance to get in front of him here like there was with Trevor. The speedrun straddles the rails to play the floor as lava, except the floor is actually just dirt that slows you down. If this is somehow your first episode of the series, or you want to rewatch it all, there is a playlist of every other episode in the description, and I will be doing GTA San Andreas next for Casual vs Speedrun and more games in the future, so stick around for those, but I'll still be doing GTA 5 content as well at the same time, and hopefully GTA 6 one day too. Michael is scripted to rocket ahead of the train, and it will speed up to be just in front of the player. The speedrun will not follow Michael into the power plant directly, but rather drive straight to the stairs he runs up so we can get ahead of Michael. The casual drives in to see where Michael crashes his car and will have to chase him up the stairs. The speedrun will already be next to Michael as this cutscene ends. We just need to run to each location to trigger the next cutscene as soon as possible, which will teleport Michael along faster for us. Shooting Michael here does nothing, he can't be killed yet. You have to wait for the scripted death at the end. Spoiler there, we will kill Michael. The speedrun is running in first person as it lets them go upstairs faster, and also makes it easier to turn around corners quickly. The casual struggles a little bit in the maze of walkways, which is probably intended anyways in this section, it's a confusing area of the map. Michael shoots at the player but does minimal damage. It would require you to stand there for like 3 minutes to actually get killed by him. Approaching the final area, Franklin has to climb a ladder to get to Michael. The speedrun does a ladder boost trick to instantly slide up the ladder by telling the game to do the slide down input right as you finish an animation cycle of going up a ladder rung. I'll show what this looks like outside of a mission after, so you can understand what's going on. After Franklin zoops on up, the speedrun spams the button to drop Michael as soon as possible which ends the timer. The casual eventually finds Michael within the catwalk jungle, and climbs up the ladder like a normal human before also making the decision to drop Michael. The time saved during the Kill Trevor mission was all based off better driving and routing, and this Kill Michael mission was nearly the same, but the routing in the walkways here and the little ladder skip at least make this ending a bit more tactical, ending up with about half the time played for the speedrun yet again. The ladder skip outside of a mission looks like this. You fly up into the air then slide back down a fake ladder. Not super useful in many cases, but I do believe it was found in GT Online, works there, and can be used in a few online heists. It's useful in the Kill Michael mission because the checkpoint is right at the top of the ladder. The boost is done by tapping the key to go up, then just as the character's hand is about to hit the first rung, hold the run button, then a moment later hold the down button and keep both of those pressed until you go flying up. Finally we can begin the true ending of the game and the real ending of the speedrun, where we pick option 3, Death Wish, also known as the third way. The speedrun will quickly make a selection and head out to the car to do the same jump we did back in ending A. 
Most of this drive is the same at first down the main Widewind Road then through Muir Park, though we'll turn into Lester's house earlier now. This drive again makes use of the upgraded Franklin car. The brake boosts are even more powerful with the engine upgrades, and the rest of the modifications help with acceleration and grip. Yes, the spoiler we put on does help with traction. It provides a downforce bonus to the car. All you kids who keep saying otherwise are free to do so elsewhere, but please don't spread misinformation in my video comments. If you want to educate yourself further, I will link a giant document in the description that explains this game's car mechanics based off in-game testing and data mining the game files. At this point, the speedrun peels off to head to Lester's house and parks in his driveway, but not all the way in so that the doors are blocked so Franklin is teleported out and can start running right away. In this final mission, the gang of characters must clean up all their loose ends so none of them need to die. This involves baiting the FIB and Merriweather to a foundry for a shootout thinking the gold is being smelted there, then taking out the targets of Stretch, Stephen Haynes, Wei Chang, and Devin Weston. Speedrun hung up the phone on Lamar instantly so they could begin running to the car. This drive adds more value to the upgraded speedrun car, while also being a dangerous drive through the city at high speed thanks to many curb boosts and brake boosts. I again love how tricky this entire mission is for being at the end of the game. It's like the whole thing is the final boss fight of GTA V. I'll mention now, if you see any lag, especially on the speedrun side of the game from here on out, it's natural lag that we get every run. Not only does this game stutter and lag on low-end hardware, but when playing at high FPS it also has frame stutter quite often. The yellow dot brings the player to a stop instantly, and the speedrun inches closer to Lamar to get him into the car faster. We just deal with the frame lag that does happen, as it's not a super constant thing, and the game running smoothly otherwise is worth it, but just know that it's not an editing mistake. The casual does a U-turn on the same road, but the speedrun took an alley back to the main avenue and is already zooming to the foundry. The speedrun will take the same suggested route into the foundry's start, we haven't found a faster way through this industrial area yet. The speedrun will come to a stop using the building instead of the yellow dot as it's just a tad quicker, then run inside via first person, and only switch the third person once nearing the cutscene as that's when the forced slowdown begins. At the same time, the speedrun takes out a rifle so that will be in Franklin's hands instead of a pistol when the shootout begins, and it begins right away. The speedrun clears the four enemies in the center quickly, then jumps down as Franklin while switching to Trevor. Similar to other shootouts, there are minimum numbers of enemies needing killed in each area, so the speedrun will move around themselves before waiting for the game's prompting. As Trevor, there are three guys on the floor, then an RPG is used to get the two guys up on the catwalk, waiting a moment for when they are both near the light as a reference point. Then enemies are shot at the far door, and that explosion gets them through the wall, which is both faster and prevents another wave of three from spawning. Since we jumped down as Franklin, he's already on the ground floor as we need to now run out to where we left Lamar and the NPCs of Michael and Trevor actually help here and clear out the remaining inside enemies as we move. A grenade launcher is used to blow up the cars and take out two guys, two more are killed up on the walkways, then one more FIB agent comes around the corner. That hits the 5 kill minimum for here and begins the series of voice lines between Franklin and Michael, but the speedrun runs to the exploded car and sets themselves on fire, which cancels all those voice lines and allows for an instant switch back inside. We make use of Michael's power the headshot for the six enemies, depending on where they ended up running, then head down for cleanup detail in the trigger Trevor, as in the storyline he gets winded and takes a break. Since we jump Trevor down too, he will be faster to reactivate and already be on the ground when we switch to him later. The speedrun needs to clear six guys from the far door again, getting most of them on the stairwell so their bodies don't block the door for later, as well as two guys coming down the stairs need killed, and it's best to get them at that point otherwise they have many places to hide in the darkness. The casual uses the sniper up above as Michael that you are defaulted to. Up until now they have done the same switches as the speedrun, but slower as they don't move until prompted, leading to needing to kill extra enemies. The speedrun will switch the Trevor now so we can make use of his grenade launcher and minigun, while the casual stays as Michael as there is no prompt to switch, and heads out the front doors that's the only door they have been through so far. The speedrun will grenade the first two close jeeps, then use the minigun on the nearby enemies in jeeps, which causes a Meriwether helicopter to spawn in. When that is taken out, it spawns in two jeeps that come from the tunnel. While we wait for the jeeps to spawn in, there's usually one or two enemies over to the right that still need cleared as they run around the train cars. The distances to the FIB agents and Meriwether goons is far enough here that the minigun can laser them down, but there's not really a worry of them being able to get accurate shots on Trevor in this location. 
After the south side is cleared, we turn around to the north side and take out four agents which triggers the spawn of a government SUV, and then have a moment to take out three guys that were spawned in by the killing of the tunnel jeeps. After all of those guys are gone, the foundry shootout is over. It's by far the most complicated and tricky shootout in the game. The casual goes through all the same spawn orders outside as the speedrun, but doesn't get the double up on killing multiple waves at the same time. Now each character has one target they need to take out, and the speedrun is going to switch to Trevor and then to Michael to confuse the game on who we are going for first, which will move Michael and Franklin closer to their targets, so even after the switch, the speedrun is closer to taking out Stretch as Michael than the casual, plus the casual then has a funny crash. The speedrun will switch to the automatic pistol and pre-break the window as Michael. The game prompts you to take out Stretch, but all his gang members must be taken out too as well to progress, so the speedrun starts with the car off to the side before moving to the court to take out Stretch himself. Stretch shoots back at us right away so we take him out from the car. Then get out and switch to a rifle with Michael's power to take out all the enemies in one go. Using Michael's power for a long time like this doesn't lose time as long as you don't miss any shots and have a big group of enemies to clear. Voice lines begin the play again, so we brutally pull out a gas can and force Michael to set himself on fire, which stops the dialogue and lets us switch to Trevor right away. The casual tries running over Stretch and his gang, but it's not very successful at first, so they have to clean up the crew and then go back behind the wall and get the annoying guys in the car. That's why the speedrun gets them first, as they can drive around and generally just be a pain to find and take out. Both players will now be hunting Stephen Haynes as Trevor, the speedrun is a seasoned hunter and knows that the Stephen Haynes species likes to flock the ferris wheels, so they come to a stop at the minimum distance for him to spawn in and take the shot, while the casual has to drive down onto the pier and hunt for the agent, waiting for the wheel to rotate. The speedrun will drive backwards down to the Vespucci streets to lose the cops. In any new game of GTA V, you can instantly lose the cops by entering a barber or tattoo shop for the first time, as long as the barber is not spooked earlier. We will shoot an RPG onto the ground just before losing the cops put the fire down, which won't spook the hairdresser even though it's right outside. If our shot were to land on the sidewalk, or any cops were to shoot at us and hit the building or sidewalk, it would scare the hairdresser and lose us about a minute and a half. Since the cops instantly forget who they were chasing, the voice lines begin to play and we can skip them again by having Trevor fail at walking over our little campfire we made with an RPG right outside. The casual is at this point finally ready to take out Haynes after being very patient on the shot with the wheel rotating. They then have to lose the cops which is pretty easy on the beach, but still much longer than losing them instantly like the speedrun did. The old strat for the speedrun here would have the speedrun drive down to the end of the pier and jump in the water. The voice lines wouldn't play when Trevor was swimming, which is a nice little attention to detail. Now it's Franklin's turn, and he'll be taking out Wei Chang and his guards at the hotel along the Great Ocean Highway. Thanks to the extra switch we did as Trevor earlier, the speedrun is already farther up along the highway. There is a short motorcycle drive north to reach the destination. The speedrun will again use the grenade launcher that remember we bought for this purpose all the way back in episode 8, halfway through the game. One well placed shot takes out all three cars and sets them on fire too. I bet you can't guess what we'll do with that fire. The voice lines are skipped and the speedrun is done as Franklin. The casual takes a bit longer as they don't have the explosives, have to shoot every enemy manually, and they generally just suck. Cleaning up escaping triad members can be a pain as they spread out. If it happens to the speedrun, one more launcher shot tends to get it done. Also I didn't mention, traffic really likes to crash into the player on this highway. Just like that. The casual is done as Franklin, and we all switch the Trevor one last time to take out Devin Weston. This shootout can be done stealthily, and our casual will try that at first, then fail it. The speedrun will make no attempt at stealth. It is important that Trevor's truck was not destroyed while taking out Stephen Haynes, otherwise he will spawn in here on foot and need to run or steal a car to get to the house. The speedrun will come to a stop just before the wall, as hitting it would alert the guards early. We'll take out the two in sight from here, then climb up and jump over to the roof to head to the back. All the other enemies in the front will end up despawning as we get far away from them quick enough. The jump over the stairs was not hard, but very satisfying to hit. The spawns here are consistent. Guy on the stairs, guy on the far right, far bottom, then close down on the stairs we go to, for the speedrun to hit their marks as the run is winding down. After taking down all the Merryweather guards, Trevor runs over to where Devin Weston is hiding and then takes him captive inside his own car. The casual is attempting to be sneaky still, but will mess up on the next guard and have to go loud, though it's not that difficult after you are around the corner anyways. 
Instead of following the road through the vine fields, the speedrun will turn off and go straight down to the highway, taking a semi-risky jump at the end. Too far right and you hit a bush and spin, if you get unlucky you smack in the traffic, and if you go too far left you fly off the road into the ocean. You can of course avoid any of those potential issues by slowing down, but there is a reason we call it a speedrun. From here, there is a 2 minute drive up north in this excruciatingly slow vehicle. It is such a tedious drive at the end of a run. Either you aren't going to beat your time and it's like a walk of shame, or when on personal best or world record pace, it's a nail biting drive as any little crash would lose tons of time, and there is one more risky jump available to take. On this turn, the speedrun will use the guardrail to carry speed and avoid any traffic. The casual is coming down the long way, following the whole road through the winery area, and otherwise nothing special happens to him for this drive. At the end of this bridge to the left is the little scenic area where the game ends. Traffic permitting, the speedrun can do a full speed jump next to this tree to get all the way down there in one go. It's a risky as hell jump as if you fall off or explode, it's another two and a half minute drive from the house again. And that's what it looks like when it's done perfectly. The cutscene plays for the time of day change, and the speedrun will be done after they push the car off the cliff and lose control of the character for the last time. This is such an awesome final mission for the game, and I think it is much more fun for both the casual and the speedrun over the other two endings. The speedrun has saved huge amounts of time during this mission thanks to the multitude of strats, starting from the save warp at the start, the insanely fast brake boost driving, the highly optimized shootout, the fire dialogue skips, knowing the best way to kill the targets, losing the cops, and those sweet jumps coming down the hills. All that leads to nearly 14 minutes of time saved when the speedrun was only in the mission for 12 minutes, really showing how much those strats do during such a long mission. That means the casual played for nearly 10 hours, and the speedrun nearly 4 hours less at 6 hours 8 minutes. If that was a real run, it would be world record right now by over 8 minutes. It really shows how much potential there is in the speedrun, and it's cool as this is technically the first segmented run of GTA 5, as well as confirming my guess that the best humanly possible time with current strats was around the 6 hour 7 minute mark, as there are a few strats missing from the early episodes of this series. We'll go back over those in bonus episodes later. If we add cutscenes into the casual's time instead of just the gameplay, that adds about 4 more hours, which would make the speedrun have less than half the time as the casual, at 6 hours compared to 14 hours. So to any casuals looking to replay the game, the biggest time save for you is to just skip all cutscenes, if you want. Thank you so much everyone for joining me in this series. I hope to call this the end of Season 1 of Casual vs Speedrun, and bring it back in tons of different video games on my channel in the future. If you already are a sub, I hope you had a nice snack while watching this. If you aren't subscribed, please do so I can afford the fuel my addiction to breakfast cereals. See you next time, everyone. Oh my god. Oh my god.